I love this book. I will admit to you that when you asked me to do it, I was thrilled because this is an easy sell. I think it's really required reading, and it's already changed the way I do friendship. I was diagnosed with breast cancer three and a half years ago. Um, I did it all wrong. When I first got the breast cancer, the first thing I did wrong was email you, and then the next thing I did wrong was to tell all my friends, close friends, 12 of them, um, that I had this, and you know, I, I was hoping for their support and love, and please don't tell anybody. With nothing to do except think about my mortality, and I said, well, you know, it's been weird how differently my friends have reacted. Not only did my closest friends tell everybody, but some people have really been oppressively close. Some people have sort of distanced themselves from me in weird ways, people I would never have expected. Many people have said terrible things, really not helpful at all. And some people have just gotten it perfectly, just right. And I said, I need help with this business of illness and friendship. So I took out my Blackberry and I Googled illness and friendship looking for a book that would help me figure out how to deal with friends who just were problematic. And there was no book. And I said, well, I, I, I think I want to write one. I'll call it How to Be a Friend to a Friend Who's Sick. And I just had a cornucopia for a reporter. And I started asking people who were sitting in the waiting room with me, you know, I'm in the same boat you are, and I'm having problems with some of my friends, and I'm wondering, how are you managing? How are your friends coming through? And that ended up being 80 interviews, which fleshed out my own experience, and that became the book. And what was the response? Were they like, yes, I'm happy to talk to you? Was there resistance? Were there, who are you? It was amazing how many people just opened right up. It was as if they needed to unload an intimate friendship and the kind of sharing that goes on at this deep level. You got to listen. And I don't care if you miss an appointment. You don't walk out. You don't say, I, I can't talk now. I'll get back to you later. What was another mistake? And then you can tell me someone who did it right. Yeah. Um, I think it was the people who, who felt that the best way to show their love for me was to call me every day and ask me how I was. Um, and for me, that was the worst because as soon as I got sick, I was trying to get well. And with every new phone call, I had to kind of revisit the most painful part, which was the, the first diagnosis. The cancer patients said they don't like survivor, they don't like to hear brave, and they don't like battle because it feels like you know they're, they're in a life and death struggle when they aren't necessarily. So I said, well, what do you call yourself if you don't call yourself a survivor? It's hard to have a label for oneself. And I just say, and many agreed with me or offered similar um, suggestions, I say I had cancer, but it, it's treated and I'm fine. I have sort of three basic questions that a friend should be able to ask a sick person or patient. One is, tell me what's helpful and what's not. Tell me when you want to be alone and when you want company. And tell me what to bring and when to leave. If you can ask those three things, you clear the vines, you smooth the way. And from then on, everything's easy because there's no such thing as saying a wrong thing because I'll tell you if it's wrong. If there's a bottom line in this book, it's that the sooner you start this policy of absolute honesty, the better the friendship will weather it.